Hey, it's Pete, North Las Vegas. Hey, I happen to own uh, three different 1x4 power, uh, low power scopes. So I thought I would do a comparison on them. And uh, I'm not an expert on optics. This is just kind of my my observations and, and what I've noticed. And I'm sure I'll forget some stuff and leave some stuff out. But if I think it's anything that matters, I'll, I'll put it in the comment section in, in the video. Anyway, uh, first one is a Black Force 1000. It's got the illuminated uh, speed force reticle, and that's this one right here. And I also own a uh, Sig Sauer Tango 4, and it's got the illuminated uh, horseshoe dot, and that's this one here. And I also have a Steiner. P4XI with the P3TR reticle. That's this one right here. Okay, so the Nikon uses uh, Japanese glass. It's assembled in the Philippines. Six hours, same thing. Japanese glass assembled in the Philippines. Steiner shot glass made in the U.S. Huh? How about that? I was kind of surprised. Okay, so a, a kind of a common problem with a lot of these low power scopes is on one power, you get a little distortion around the 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 edge of the the lens as you're looking through it, especially if you move your head and you're not looking directly through the center, you'll get a little bit of distortion, what I call fisheye. Um, the Nikon has the most fisheye. The Sig Sauer has middle of the road fisheye and the Steiner did the best on one power. Still had some but not as much. Um, Nikon has very good eye relief, it's very forgiving. Um, Sig Sauer, the eye relief is not so good. If you move your head back and forth about three quarters of an inch you're either, you're, you're not going to get a full sight picture. Um, Steiner had very good eye relief. Um, on the Nikon, it only carries one battery, and it's this little slim cover here. It's really hard to get your fingers on, and it's kind of snug. Once I did get it off, I uh, put some Vaseline on the, the O-rings, or the seal. It comes with a tool, though. So if this thing gets to a point where it's been on there for a while and it's hard to get off, you can't get it off with your fingers. They do have a little tool that you put in these notches and you can get your cap off that way. Um, the Sig Sauer carries a spare battery and has a dual uh, battery compartment. There's the part that carries the, the spare battery and then there's the part where the battery goes in. And you screw it together one piece, uh, you take it apart in two pieces and there's an O-ring between the spare battery and where the other battery mounts on the cap. And I've taken this off twice, just for the heck of it. And this usually comes off in two pieces instead of one piece. And there is the possibility of losing the O-ring. So when I review each of these scopes uh, individually, I'll take that battery cap apart and show you what I'm talking about exactly. Now the Steiner battery compartment, it's like, oh my God, that thing is just cranked on there. So as I'm trying to take the battery cap off, of course the illumination switch rotates to its stops, and I really thought I was going to damage it. Um, I, you can't get a grip on the part that you need to hold still versus the cap. So what I did was I took some rubber bands and put the rubber bands around the illumination switch so I could get a good grip on it, and that's how I managed to get the cap off because I was really afraid I was going to damage that the switch stops. That, that cap is on so tight. And kind of the same thing, I put some, uh, some Vaseline on the, the seal, the O-rings here, so that now I can get it off a little easier. And I learned that you don't snug this any more than you think you need to. I mean, it's just really a bear to get off. Um, the ocular, plenty of ocular adjust or focus, whatever you want to call it. Um, all three of them do a really good job on that. Um, the zoom ring on the 
Nikon and the Sig Sauer are about a 160 degree throw, I would say. And on the Steiner, it's a full 180. So as you're rotating through the zoom functions, it takes you a little bit longer to get there. Now I got the Steiner model 5202. And the only difference between the 5202 and I think it was the one or maybe the three, I don't remember, is you get a throw lever with the, the 5202. Now, I think they did away with one of the model numbers. They're just, they're putting in the throw lever on, on all of them now. So I think all that's presently available as far as new stock is the 5202 model. Um, Nikon has a battery timeout function. So if you leave the illumination on, it'll turn itself off. And then you have to manipulate the illumination to turn it back on. Sig Sauer has what's called a MOTAC system where it'll time out, turn itself off, but if you leave the, the switch in the on position, all you do is move it and it'll automatically turn itself back on. So I thought that was kind of a nice feature. And Steiner doesn't do that. Steiner says, if you don't remember to turn your illumination off, you're gonna have a dead battery. I kind of agree with that. Okay, so the next part of the video, I'm going to um, review each scope individually and just talk about some of the differences that way. And then uh, towards the end of the video, if I could only have um, one of these, you know, which one would I pick for my intended use? Um, I'll tell you, one of them is set up primarily for competition use. One of them is set up to kind of do both. And then one of them is set up really for just close quarters. It's, it's kind of set up for tactical use and that's that's its primary function <clears throat> okay so we'll kind of drill down into each scope now and uh, we'll start off in alphabetical order so we'll start off with the nikon first um, this is a battery compartment cover cap that i was talking about and it's you have very little to, to get a hold of with your fingers and uh there's a seal this is a rubber seal here that puts pressure against the, the battery, keeps it in place. And then there's like a little O-ring or a piece of rubber or something, I don't know. So I put a little Vaseline in here, and uh, if this thing is on too tight where you can't get it off with your fingers, um, they give you a tool. And you just take these notches here and line it up with the notches on the cap, and then you can tighten and loosen. Um, Elevation and windage knobs um, are not uh, zero stop unless maybe you can put washers in there like some people do with their other scopes, but it doesn't have its own uh, zero stop. But it does have a quick release uh, zero adjustment. So once you get your scope dialed in, if you want it back on zero, you just lift this up and reset your zero. And windage does the same thing, but it doesn't actually have a, a zero stop. And it comes with the caps, so you don't have to worry about banging your adjustments around. Um, the glass is good. It's not quite as good as the Steiner. Um, I couldn't really tell the difference between the Six Hour glass and the Nikon glass. As far as clarity and brightness, they were both about the same. But... Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the reticle. Um, this scope is primarily designed for competition. You can use it for close quarters. You can use it um, for ranging. It's just not as easy as one of the other scopes. So anyway, the, the reticle is primarily set up for three-gun target, IPSC target, and pepper poppers. And that's how all these uh, subtensions and holdovers are set up. And you're supposed to zero this scope at 100 yards to make sure that all this stuff is accurate. So this scope is all set up in MOA and the scope is calibrated for 55 grain with a BC of 0.240 and 3240 feet per second. So Nikon did a really good job with their manual showing you how to use the reticle for ranging and in competition. And they give plenty of information 
on what true MOA is, not what everybody thinks, like one inch, it's actually 1.047 inches per 100 yards. And uh, so Nikon did a really good job on providing reticle information. And reticle information did not come with the Sig Sauer. They put everything else in their manual but that. So they had a note in their manual that says go to sixhouroptics.com and get the reticle information. So I went there and I could not find any reticle information. I clicked on everything. So I finally called the guy up at Six Hour and said, hey, uh, there's not enough information in, in the manual to really tell me how to use this reticle. And he said, uh, yeah, we're working on that. We need to update our site and we got, we got to get some, some things changed. So um, he said that he would send it to me in a PDF, an email, which he did. Well, when it showed up, it was uh, actually for a Tango 6, not a Tango 4. But I was just kind of assuming that the subtensions and the holdovers and how to use the reticle would be the same. You just get an extra two power. So just to make sure, though, I called him back and I said, hey, that PDF you sent me, it gave every bit of reticle information except for the Tango 4. So um, he said, yeah, yeah, we're kind of working on that. We need to update our site. But he said they are both the same. So the reticle for the Tango 4 and a Tango 6 first focal plane illuminated horseshoe dot is the same. Okay, so I think we covered most of the Nikon. Um, I think I already mentioned 100, about 160 degree throw going through the zoom. A little on the stiff side, but it's it's very smooth. No grittiness to it or anything. Um, it's the lightest of the scopes. And it's the cheapest of the scopes. And I've become a fan of these Midwest industry mounts. They work great. If you get them adjusted right, they're, they're snug. Uh, the scope doesn't move around. Okay, so anyway... I think we covered most of the Nikon. Let's move on to the SIG. Okay, we're on the SIG Sauer now, and talk about that battery compartment that I was mentioning, and how it's two pieces. And there's the possibility that you could lose an O-ring if you're not careful. So anyway, um, the battery actually sits on the first piece with a magnet. So that's kind of a nice feature, so hopefully you won't drop your uh, battery out in the field. And here's where the little O-ring goes on the other side of the main battery. And Spare battery sits right in here. I don't have the spare battery installed right now, but if it was, that's where it would go spare battery so this screws together in two pieces and like I said if you're not careful it can come apart in two pieces and then you you might lose the o-ring but the battery compartment out of the three scopes is the easiest to access and I think I already talked at the beginning of the video this has what's called MOTAC it turns itself off and on it's got a, a motion sensor. Um, it's got exposed turrets. These do have a zero stop, but you have to mechanically set them. They give you two different size uh, Allen wrenches to do that. Um, one of the things I kind of like is uh, they give you this rotation counter so you know where you're at rotation wise. So I thought that was kind of a nice feature. But anyway, the, uh, the zoom function is nice and smooth. Plenty of ocular adjustment. Um, like I said earlier in the video, the eye relief is not so good with this scope. Uh, the optic clarity is as good as the Nikon. I can't really tell if it's better, but it's definitely not worse. So as far as optic clarity and crispness, these two are about equal. Um, as far as the reticle goes, I picked the, uh, the horseshoe reticle and it's in MOA. And this scope is also designed to be zeroed at 100 yards for all this stuff to be accurate. And 
this is what you get in the six hour manual on how to use your reticle you get nothing so I went online it says go to six hour optics to find reticle information I clicked on everything there it was not there so then I called the guy up and he says yeah we need to make some changes to our site we're not quite up to speed on a few things let me send it to you in a PDF I said okay that works so I own the Tango 4 and what he sent me was the Tango 6 so then I had to call him back I, I assumed that they would be the same but you never know so I, I called him and said hey is, there's not going to be any difference between 6 power and a 4 power and he said no they're they're identical you just get a couple extra power on, on the 6 so this horseshoe is calibrated at 100 yards for 5.56 five, and let me see if I can find the I think it's 3200 feet per second definitely 55 grain 100 at a zero or zeroed at 100 yards so the owner's manual for the the six hour is really lacking but this reticle in my opinion you can use it for close quarters because it's first focal plane as you uh, get down to low power pretty much all these subtensions disappear and all you can see is just the center um, this is not daylight bright if you're looking at any bright surface you're not going to see the illumination it's just not going to happen and I forgot to mention on the Nikon it's kind of what I would call semi daylight bright if you're looking at a dark tree or a dark bush or something dark you can see the illumination but if you're looking at anything bright like that house over there you're not going to see the illumination so this illumination not so good this illumination not good at all illumination on the Steiner you can point this thing right at the Sun damn near I mean I'm exaggerating a little bit but you can point it at the Sun and you will be able to see the illumination so the Steiner is true daylight bright um, first focal plane I kind of got mixed feelings about it on a low power scope um, it's really hard to see the center dot when you're at low power once you get up to four power it's fine and uh, like I said if you're indoors or in a low light setting the the illumination is good rather than that it's not okay so we're, we're moving on to the Steiner okay so we're on a Steiner now um, this is that battery compartment I was talking about you, you can't get a grip on the illumination switch you just you can't get a hold of it and this cap is on so tight that if you rotate this illumination switch all the way against the off stop you're gonna I'm convinced you're gonna damage that thing so um, what I did was I took some rubber bands and wrapped a rubber band around that so I could get a good grip on it and had enough friction to where I could really crank on this and I just barely uh, snug this up when I put the battery back in and now it's really stiff again and I put some Vaseline on this one too the o-rings and the seals and uh, so I don't know Steiner your scope's like 99% uh, there, but not the battery compartment. <clears throat> so anyway, this has the best glass. It's shot glass, and like I said earlier in the video, made in the USA. Um, the throw is a 180, so you gotta you got to move this a little bit more than the other two. Um, something I forgot to mention was um, the SIG and the Steiner have uh, night vision settings, and... The Nikon has some very, very low settings, so uh, maybe you could say that, you know, it's, it's, you could possibly use it for night vision, but I don't think so. So anyway, that's another plus to these two. Um, same thing with Steiner. This is their book, and there's just nothing in there about how to use the reticle. So once again, I had to go online, and at least this time with Steiner, the reticle PDF was at their site. Now they want their reticle zeroed at 200 yards, which is the same as a 50 yard zero, 
which means at 10 yards you'll be shooting 1.9 inches lower than your point of aim with a 50 yard zero. And they also want 5.56 NATO 62 SS 109 at 3100 feet per second. Uh, most of the even numbers on the reticle subtensions you look like they're mill radian, but they do give you a conversion chart over here, a basic conversion chart for uh, inches and yards for their reticle. Now on a Steiner, all you get is the center dot illuminated. And like I said earlier, it is daylight bright. Make no mistake about that. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but you can almost point it at the sun and still see that dot. Where well, these two are not true daytime bright. Um, no zero stop. I don't know if you can reset the zero. Maybe you can. The book doesn't say anything about it. You may be able to take these two screws off once you get this thing sighted in and rotate this to zero and then put the cap back on. I haven't researched that yet. Maybe some of you guys out there that own these might already know. Okay, so final assessment. Most affordable, next affordable, most expensive. Um, these two are pretty close in price. I think this was about 70, 80 bucks more. And this was the least amount. Now, I don't do competition. I don't do three gun. So the reticle on this really doesn't do much for me. So I probably just use it under 200 yards and you can still do some ranging with the reticle the way it's set up, but it's not quite as easy. This one here, they, they tried to, in my opinion, do both. They tried to make it competition and uh, kind of a tactical reticle. Um, not sure it does either one all that great because like I said, the illumination isn't all that great. This scope here is designed for tactical. Um, it's not designed for competition. Um, they do give you some basic holdover and basic ranging on the reticle, but this is a no frills, just get the job done, police, law enforcement, military. So, if I had to pick one, which one would I go with? If I could only pick one, I'd go with the Steiner. Anyway, I know it's probably not the best scope review, but maybe you guys got something out of it. Later, Pete in North Las Vegas.